So in section 2.1, and we're going to start off by talking about the atomic theory of John Dalton. The first concept of an atom came from like ancient Greece, and the word came from the Greek word for indivisible. And basically what they were thinking about was like if you had a piece of lead, say, and you cut it in half. Well, then you have two pieces of lead, both with the same kind of properties. But what if you just kept doing that, cutting it into smaller and smaller and smaller pieces? They theorized that at some point you would wind up with a uh, piece that was so small that when you cut it in half, it would no longer have the properties of lead. Uh, they were on the right track, but this wasn't really formalized in any way until 1807 by an English school teacher named John Dalton. Dalton's atomic theory has uh, five postulates. The first is that matter is ex composed of exceedingly small particles called atoms. An atom is the smallest unit of element that can participate in a chemical change. It's the smallest unit of an element that has the properties of that element. The second is that an element consists of only one type of atom, which has a mass that is characteristic of the element and is the same for all atoms in, of that element. So every atom of copper, for instance, weighs the same amount, and that's why every penny of roughly the same size is going to weigh the same amount. His third postulate is that atoms of one element differ in properties from the atoms of all other elements. The fourth is that a compound consists of atoms of two or more elements combined in a small whole number ratio. In a given compound, the number of atoms of each of its elements are always present in the same ratio. So he was really trying to explain how we have all this myriad of different materials when we know that it's all based on just a small set of elements. So in our example here we have copper oxide. We can see that this is composed of both copper and oxygen in a regular pattern. For every copper there is one oxygen atom and they arrange themselves together in a definite pattern. The fifth postulate is that atoms are neither created nor destroyed during a chemical change, but they instead only rearrange to make different other compounds. So Dalton's theory uh, led to a very important conclusion here called the law of conservation of matter. If the atoms are neither created nor destroyed during a chemical change, then the total mass of matter present when uh, should remain the same. Um, we should have the same mass of products plus uh, as we had the initial reactants. For this chapter we're going to assume that our chemical reactions complete uh, completely convert to products. That will make our lives a lot easier. In this case the initial mass of the reactants is going to equal the mass of the products. In practice, though, reactions really don't go all the way to completion. You always wind up with at least some of the reactants left over. In this case, you're going to have the initial mass of the reactants is equal to the mass of the products, the things that you made, plus the mass of the leftover reactants that didn't react. Next, we have the law of definite proportions, or the law of, con of constant compositions. This states that all samples of a pure compound contain the same elements in the same proportion by mass. So we can see that this is illustrated here where we have equal number in the first example here of uh, green balls and blue balls and we wind up with a product that has equal number of green and blue balls. In the second example, we have twice as many green balls as blue balls, and we wind up with a product that has twice as many green as blue balls. 
constant composition. So we can actually put a little bit of math to that. And we can in here, if we look at our example here, we took the exact same compound, isooctane, and we had different masses for three different samples. When we go and test for the amount of carbon and hydrogen that's contained in it, we wind up getting differing amounts of carbon and differing amounts of hydrogen. But the ratio of carbon to hydrogen, if I divide the amount of carbon by the amount of hydrogen, is always the same. There's always 5.33 grams of carbon for every one gram of hydrogen. So they have a, a constant composition. The next conclusion is something called the law of multiple proportions. This states that when two elements react to form one more than one compound, a fixed mass of one element will react with the masses of the other element in a ratio of small whole numbers. That's a little confusing, so let's look at our example here. If we have two different compounds, both containing chlorine and copper, and we have a so we have our green solid and we have our brown solid, if we took the ratios of chlorine to copper and then we divided those two we see that the brown solid has two chlorines for every one chlorine that's down here in our green solid. That means that the brown solid has twice as many chlorines. We can picture that here where we can see here there is roughly one chlorine or two chlorines for every one copper. Whereas over here, we have twice as many chlorines as we did on the left.